Hi friends, my name is Baji. Welcome back to our channel. In our previous video, we discussed how to develop API scripts in JMeter. If you haven't watched that video yet, I highly recommend watching it first and then continuing this video. So far, we have covered the essential elements needed to create a script in JMeter. We have gone over recording the script and explored various ways to customize it such as using parameterization, correlation, modularization and more. Before diving into actual test executions, it is important to make sure our script follows the best practices. This ensures that the test results accurately reflect how the application performs in real world scenarios. Now let's explore these best practices to ensure our script is well prepared for testing. Before we deep dive into particular best practices, let's take a moment to understand why following these best practices is important in the first place. One of the main objective of performance testing is to pinpoint the performance bottlenecks of the application or infrastructure by simulating the workload that closely mimics real user behavior. Ultimately, we aim to avoid troubleshooting issues arising from poor script development. Most of the times, we engage in various projects and it's common for another team member to handle the scripts that we have created. A well-organized script makes it easier for you and your team to understand, update and troubleshoot scripts in the future. So, by following the best practices enables us to create efficient scripts that are easily maintainable and consistent with other scripts developed by other team members. Now, let's look at those important best practices that can serve as a checklist for validating the scripts. In every organization, they will have some naming standards defined for scripts, transactions, etc. By following proper naming conventions helps other team members easily understand the scripts better and makes it easier for them to maintain it in the future. In addition to that, it will also help us during the analysis. For example, if you use the same transaction name called transfer across multiple scripts, it becomes challenging to distinguish the problematic script in the results. So, always use unique names to avoid mixing results within the results files. We should always ensure that the functional mode option in the test plan is unchecked. If it is checked and we are writing the results to a file, then the JMeter will capture the server response from each sampler and write it into the results. The consequence is that the file will grow huge quickly and JMeter will impact. While recording a JMeter script using the HTTPS test script recorder, it is often captures third-party services requests such as Google, Gmail, Facebook, etc. alongside the application requests. During script enhancements, it is essential to remove these third-party requests to exclude load testing services unrelated to the application. Not removing them might cause problems like getting blocked because it looks like a DDoS cyber attacks. Here DDoS means distributed denial of service. Also, it can influence the testing results in a wrong way. Okay? When you open a browser and visit an application, it automatically downloads resources like CSS, JavaScript, images, etc. even if you did not explicitly request them. So, when scripting for a web application in JMeter, it is crucial to mimic real user behavior accurately. That's why we always make sure to select the retrieve all embedded resource option in the HTTP sampler request. So, this setting helps JMeter simulate browser-like behavior more effectively. By default, JMeter will send requests without pausing between each request. If you execute a test without configuring timers correctly, JMeter might flood the server with so many requests in a short time frame. This is not a realistic because real users take breaks between their actions. No user continuously bombards a server without pauses, right? To act like real users and avoid overloading the server, we need to add timers in the script. This makes our testing more like how regular users would interact with the server or application. When handling dynamic values during correlation, we create regular expressions. However, badly written regular expressions in JMeter can have a negative impact on CPU performance. So, it is crucial to make sure that the regular expression extractor contains well-optimized expressions. Test scripts are like a guidebook for virtual users or threads. They mimic what real users would do, creating the actual load on the application. Since these virtual users or threads don't know anything about the application, we have to tell them what to do at each step and these instructions are written in the script. So, we should always avoid making things overly complex. Even if you are good at writing scripts, it is generally advisable to opt for JMeter functions whenever they can achieve the same goal. With each release and plugin, JMeter introduces new functions which can be implemented in various fields or test elements. Suppose if there is a need for custom logic in the script, the recommended approach is to utilize the JSR223 elements and opt for Groovy as the scripting language. Groovy is a great dynamic scripting language 
that is well maintained offers support for a compilable interface and outperforms virtually all other languages in jmeter primarily bean shell for enhanced performance it is advisable to enable the cache compilation option in the jsr223 element this can substantially improve overall performance don't use too many assertions in jmeter because it can lead to increased memory usage so it is better to use them wisely even though validations are good for making sure things are right having too many can cause up a lot of memory additionally it is recommended to avoid applying assertions on large server responses particularly those exceeding 1 megabyte in size this practice helps maintain efficient memory utilization during the jmeter tests we should always disable the ui listeners especially graphs and view registry or table in those scripts that are going to be used for actual load tests it is better to save results only to a jtl file using the simple data writer if you don't follow this advice you might run into a problem where there is not enough memory for the test to run properly jmeter allows the use of loggers and log levels to capture information about the test execution while logging is valuable for debugging and understanding what happens during a test excessive logging can significantly impact performance and consume system resources jmeter provides various listeners and loggers to capture and save results it is essential to configure these components thoughtfully to store only the necessary data for instance the view registry listener can consume a considerable amount of memory if used excessively in a high load scenario storing every response in detail may not be practical instead use listeners like the summary report or aggregated report to collect key metrics without saving the detailed response data for each sample okay instead of creating large scripts break down your test logic into smaller self contained modules or functions these modules can focus on specific functionalities or user actions make your modules adaptable by parameterizing input values this allows you to reuse same modules with different input data modular code is easier to maintain when a change is required you can update a specific module without affecting the entire script Once you have created reusable modules you can leverage them across different projects saving time and effort so that's it for this video thank you so much for staying till the end and supporting me i hope you found this video helpful feel free to apply these best practices to create optimized jmeter scripts for your load test executions if you have any questions or want to share your experience feel free to leave a comment below all the video notes have been uploaded in github and you can find the link in the description If you are new to our channel please consider subscribing and also like and share this video so that others will also get benefited I'll see you with the next video in this module until then take care stay safe and keep learning